right then everybody so it's gonna be the top five best decks for the upcoming july 2022 so if you plan to go to world so if you plan to go to a ycs regional or just your locals and this is gonna be the top five best decks that you gotta be looking out for i have been playing a close eye on the meta watching competitive games online playing myself on high rated dueling book i have been doing a ton of studying until it comes to the meta so this is i have narrowed it down to the top five best decks and you are more than welcome to debate with me on the comments i'll be looking at the comments uh, after the video goes up so uh, if you want to post your opinions you can post them down below so yeah let's get started so at top five we have the bane of some people's existence and it is flounderies flounderies i mean we're looking at mpen right here on ebay and i think flounderies is just one of those decks that every time you see like a top breakdown they're always in the top eight top four or sometimes even the finals and it's because they have some of the craziest blowout cards in the game right they can play harpy's featherstorm they can play shifter they can play the wind barrier statue right they, if they win die roll they're pretty much gonna win that game especially because they play pot of prosperity and duality so the chances of them seeing the card they want is really high right the only downside when it comes to flow is that uh, they lose to zombie world and uh, whenever they lose the die roll, they kind of have a hard time going second, right? They have to play some cheesy things like zoos and stuff like that. So, but don't get me wrong, this is still a powerhouse. If they open shifter, they're, they're gonna skip your turn anyway. So, yeah. So, and they play dark ruler no more. So, that's another thing that they can do when going second. So, but yeah, flounder is just one of those decks that infuriates people. Like as soon as they see. Uh, pot of prosperity for six and they look at the top six card they're like oh no we're, we're in for it right now but yeah just be on the lookout for flow under and that's why i have them at my top five and now at my top four we have despia despia a lot of people thought that despia was going to be the top deck of this format and I, although i don't think it's the top deck I, I still think it's in the top five don't get me wrong you can still set up a pretty scary board with like multiple mirror jade banishes right they can set up uh, multiple pops with the ch chimera and they can also set up like double or triple masquerade so you you're gonna have a very hard time playing through that so yeah they are good when it comes to competitive Yu-Gi-Oh because uh, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh is determined by time right you only have a limited amount of time so masquerade can come in huge in those scenarios so uh and they don't lose to like a droplet or a dark ruler no more because they still have the branded in red so even after you dark ruler no more them they can still play after that so uh and they can also set up stuff like banshee uh and set up a zombie world against flounderies they can set up snow if they want to so it, they have a lot of flexibility on depending on how they want to build their deck so um but they lose to the side deck that's their only con they lose to dimensional barrier they lose to anti spell fragrance and sometimes they even lose to a single ash although ash is not side deck but ash can kind of like skip their turn uh if they didn't draw the correct card so that's why i have despia as my number four but now for the number three for the number three we have sword soul and it hurts me to put sword soul as the number three because i thought going into this format this is going to be the best deck of the format but i have been proven wrong i mean i still think it's a powerhouse going first and going second it can break a lot of scary boards uh the only reason why i think it has gone down in the rankings is because um a lot of people are either main decking or side decking token collecting co token collector and they can set it they can send it with shooting riser so the chances of them seeing token collector is very high and source has a hard time playing through token collector they have to have either the call by the grave or the chalice i mean it, they have a pretty tough time playing through token collector so that's why i think uh sword soul has gone down in the rankings but if you don't draw that token collector you're, you're gonna be having a hard time playing against them because they're probably gonna end up breaking your board um they also kind of lose to dimensional barrier and dimensional barrier is almost a staple in everybody's side deck or even sometimes main deck so that's why i have sword soul as my number three and now for my number two a lot of people may not expect this right here but i i'm very confident that this belongs at the number two like i'm i'm like willing to like debate with anybody that wants to argue with this but at number two i have drytron drytron 
Drivetron is one of those few decks that can play under Scythe Lock. You may be wondering why. It's because like they don't really rely on their extra deck. They can they can still play with Dracunits. They can still play with the Ritual Monsters. So they don't really rely on their extra deck. So uh, a lot of people are like, oh, if, if they Scythe Lock me, I lose. But Drytron is like, well, I'm going to keep playing anyway. So, And they have a very good grind game. If you don't kill them, if you don't OTK them, they have all their Drytron names in the graveyard. They can key. They're going to be able to play with Gamma, Alpha, Zeta, everything from the graveyard. So, yeah. And they can set up a very scary board, which is the Vanity Ruler plus Magic Key Counter Trap card. So that means you cannot special summon and they have a way to protect it against stuff like Droplet or Infinite Impermanence. So you're going to have to have like double out to it plus combo. So I'm not assuming they don't have any hand traps or anything like that. So yeah. And uh, one guy that won like a big event, I don't remember where, he he, he talked about how the, the deck kind of struggles against Droll and Lockbird, right? Because they do a lot of searching. But if they already have full combo in their opening hand, uh, they just go ahead and tribute out Benton. Benton search the Herald of the Orange Light as their first search. So if they get Droll there, they just activate the Herald of the Orange Light and they get they get protected against Droll that way. So yeah, they even have ways to play around Droll. I mean, sure, they can they can have that cross out or call by the grave, but that's like one way in engine that they can play around Droll. So. Uh, and they're very good at going second as well. They can they can uh, pop their stuff, pop your stuff with stuff like Unicorn or Nightmare Phoenix, or they can go into Zeus. And so yeah, they have a very good time going second as well. And they don't lose to Dimensional Barrier because what are you gonna call? You, if you call a Ritual, they're gonna go into X Y Zs or Links. If you call X Y Zs, they're gonna go into Rituals and Links. Yeah, so they don't auto lose to Dimensional Barrier. So they have very few weaknesses. So. That's why I have Drytron as my number two. I think it's a powerhouse that you got to be looking out for. So, And now for the number one, the time we've all been waiting for. The time we've all been waiting for. But before we get to the number one pick, let's do some honorable mentions. First honorable mentions, we have Dragonlink Brave. Dragonlink Brave can do some crazy combos, especially with the Baron and setting up the Red Rose and Rocks Rose. Um, they can go into Shooting Riser, sending uh, Token Collector or Snow. I don't think they want to send uh, the Banshee because they, they lose to Zombie World. But uh, Dragon Link is a very good deck going first and going second. So adding Nisters, they set up the Arrival. Plus they have a, an Interruption in the Graveyard. Plus they can have a lot of Hand Traps. Now they got Heat Soul, so they, if they do play a lot of hand traps, they can draw into them with Heat Soul. They get two draws, one in their turn, one in their opponent's turn. So adding this there is very good right now, I think. And for the last honorable mention, I have Eldritch Despia. Eldritch Despia. It's crazy because I thought Eldritch was like kind of coming up, especially after he got that second place against Prank Kids at the YCS against, against the Elijah Green. But... Uh, a lot of people are already ready for the LH matchup. They're playing up to like six or seven back row outs, especially because Sky Striker won the YCS uh, recently with Mystic Mind. I don't want to. I don't want to go into that. But a lot of people are prepared to face back row decks now. It's not going to catch them by surprise. They're playing either main deck uh, Feather Duster or they're playing a lot of side deck hate like evenly match lightning storms cosmic cyclones twin twisters red reboot so i think eldritch struggles against like heavy back row removal and that's why it has gone down a lot but it's still a powerhouse if you if you if you think that you don't need uh back row removal in your side deck and or your main deck you're gonna get punished by eldritch so be on the lookout for that so yeah that's where those were my three honorable mentions dragon link brave adding nisters and Eldritch Despia. So now to the top one, the time we've all been waiting for, and it is Therion Punk. Therion Punk. I think that is the undisputed number one deck at the moment. Um, although every deck right now kind of etches each other out, this one's just the one that etches the other ones by like the biggest margin. I think that this deck has like multiple auto win buttons it can either like scythe lock the opponent or it could either it just you just need 1.5 cards to scythe lock the opponent or you can go into the hot 
red dragon archfiend king calamity so that's another way that you can have an auto win against the opponent because it basically skips your opponent's turn so if you don't draw that droplet then you're gonna be in for a bad time so it doesn't lose to token collector right you might be wondering why don't you have like punk brave in here punk brave is because token collector is being side deck or main deck a lot so if your deck loses to token collector you're gonna be having a bad time right now because people are ready for that sourceful matchup so um theorem punk does not lose to token collector that's why i think they have an easier time right now in the format great are going second they can go into either zeus or they can go into the psychic and punisher which if you haven't read psychic and punisher you might want to read it again because i had to reread it a couple of times just to understand what it does and it's a crazy card um this deck is basically the result of konami making a lot of bad decisions they 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 brought jet synchron out of the ban list and they kept halki fibrax unbanned this is what you get when that happens, right? Now you needed a 1.5 card Scythe Lock, which is crazy, right? Especially Emergency Teleport being at 3 is insane. It has little to no weaknesses. So, uh, and stuff like the Therion, which can help you get an Omni Negate. And the grind game is just insane. It even prevents your monsters from being destroyed by battle with the Field Spell. So, with the Colosseum. So, yeah, Therion Punk is just a powerhouse. I, I don't think... That a lot of people can argue that this is the best deck at the time, but it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive if you want to build this deck. So if, you, if you're if you looking more of the budget route, I don't recommend this. Uh, there are other options that you have. If you want to, if you want me to make like a budget, like the top five best budget decks, uh, put it on the comments below and I'll make a list for that. So uh, I know a lot of people don't have like unlimited resources like some other people. So, but yeah, that will be it for the top five. Um, if you agree or you disagree with me, please put it on the comments below. But as always, this was Yara here, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.